You just came out from a, a tour around the western part of the world, um, talking to investors for feedback about this market. What, what are they saying overall? Because it seems like we've really started to see this rally falter. Is this really a repeat of maybe this reopening rally that proved to be short-lived? Right. So, um, as, as you mentioned, we've uh, met with investors not only in the U.S. and Europe, but also in China. So I think the con quite consistent feedback, or well, oh, put it this way, if you take a step back, uh, after market rallying 32 percent mm. from the lows in late January to the, to the highs in mid-May, now obviously the market has corrected about 10 percent. I think um, there are two really kind of main investor concerns that have contributed to that correction. Number one is policy. Number two is U.S. politics, right? So on policy, I think uh, most investors that we have spoken with, they, they are somewhat disappointed with the policy intensity and follow through mm -hmm. after the April Power Bureau meeting. Right, obviously, at the meeting, the policy tone regarding the housing market shift. Mm. Right, but after that, obviously, the authorities have taken some measures. But um, I think investors are expecting more, uh, given the continued weakness in the housing market, where uh, new home sales are still down 40 percent year on year for the first half. Mm. Um, so I think there's a little bit of disconnection or a little bit of gaps out there regarding investors' expectation on policy and what's been delivered so far. Mm. And on top of that, second main concern, obviously, not surprisingly, is a U.S. election. Yeah. November. It is, it's only like a few months away. Mm. And um, I think very much consistent with uh, the betting markets, implied probability, and the, and the latest polls, yeah. I think uh, it seems to suggest that former pros, uh, President Trump would likely win the election if the election were to be held today. Right? If that's the case, I think uh, investors are clearly concerned about the potential escalation of trade frictions yeah. for China. And if you look at Chinese exports, uh, which have been a very important contributor to growth so far this year, could be under somewhat pressure. Yeah. Do you think that keeps investors away largely? So let's, you know, we can look at policy separately, but we know that the election is almost like a brick wall that's five months away. Uh, any, in other words, at best, is this a cyclical trade? Uh, when you look at the Chinese market, of, of, within that time frame, of course. Yeah, I, I think, of, of course, given the U.S. election and the uncertainty about policies and yeah. Chinese exports and uh, things like that, um, I think we have to reassess right, the situation as we uh, approach these events. But at least on a tactical, short-term trading basis, yeah. uh, our view is very clear. I think the market set up going into the July plenum as well as the power bill meetings mm. uh, look, looks pretty compelling for a number of reasons. A, given the corrections, valuations have retraced mm. to about nine times forward earnings, and we're just about 10% above uh, where we were uh, in late January when sentiment was poor and policy put option was less forceful than where we are now. Yeah. On top of that, I think we've, we've seen some earnings improvement. Uh, for MSCI China uh, in May, we had the first month of upward earnings revisions over the past one year. So it sort of gives us uh, some uh, hope that uh, we are moving towards the tail end of the downward earnings revision cycle. Mm. And importantly, from a uh, positioning standpoint, over the past two months, whether it's hedge funds or lonely investors, they have reduced the exposures to Chinese equities. And now the absolute, the notional exposures to China basically has, have um, got gone back to the lows uh, from a historical standpoint. Uh, last but not least, I think um, investors' expectations going into the July pol uh, policy meetings, I think, are very conservative. But you're more hopeful. Why? Uh, relative to a very low expectation, <laughs> we are a little bit more hopeful. And I think the, the, the reason is very simple. If the government is serious um, in terms of uh, growing the economy by about 5%, mm. just by doing the backward deduction and back of the envelope calculation, we think we need more policy support from the government. So I think from a sort of timing standpoint, I think the July meetings would be a window for uh, policymakers to step up the policy uh, easing intensity. What about short-term measures to, I wouldn't, you know, I'm hesitant to use the word stabilize the market because it's not like this market is falling off a cliff, but to, to put a floor underneath this decline in prices. So whether that's this, these short selling measures or this increased volumes you're seeing in some of the ETFs, for example, do you think, well, number one, do you think there is enough evidence that state funds are again in this market, number one? And number two, do you think the short selling measures will work? I would, I would say the so-called national team, based on our trackers, um, they definitely have turned more proactive, more active. 
in the equity market by directly intervening mm. um, equity prices. Um, so we have a so-called so national team tracker, yeah. which suggests that um, so far this year, the national team has uh, deployed more than 200 billion RMB. Uh, in the Asia markets to stabilize prices there. On top of that, as you said, David, uh, I think just overnight we had the news that uh, short selling ban, mm -hmm. and I think in the short term, that should be a uh, boost to sentiment. You mentioned about this protracted earnings down cycle. Maybe we're, we're near the end of it. Are you seeing more signs of it? We, we just saw 300 companies come out with prelim earnings, and most of these sectors are still talking about first half losses here right mm. now. Yeah, I, I think um, so. The numbers that I just mentioned in, in May, we have yeah. the first monthly upward earnings provisions for the aggregate market. But if you really go into the details, the upward or earnings upgrade was mainly driven by one sector, mm. which tech. is TNT. Yeah. Yes, tech, TMT. <laughs> um, and I think fundamentally, the, the big players, the, the internet giants, are doing well. Right, uh, given the recovery uh, from a top line standpoint mm -hmm. and stabilizing margins. Um, but if you look at other sectors, particularly those that are more uh, related to the housing market, I think they're still under significant pressures. So I think the earnings picture is a little bit more, um, so a little bit more uh, diverse or a little bit more nuanced. Yeah. Should, I mean, more, more on the upcoming, it's a busy July, as you point out, right? We have, a, we have the, well, the third planner with the Polypier. Should our expectations be this low? Um, I think, as uh, we, we, we argued, I think in, investors' expectations are too conservative, right. in our view. And that's why, given where we are on the valuation cycle, given where we are on the positioning cycle, mm -hmm. we think that the near-term risk reward looks a little bit compounding. But of course, after going through these meetings, right. um, we have to reassess the situation about U.S.-China and uh, the earnings trend going forward. The, the, the changes at you know how the PBOC is conducting monetary policy, right? They're fine-tuning some of the tools. Yep. Not so much on what they're trying to do, but do you think this is setting us up for a more aggressive next few months? Of, 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 of policy easing from China in, in that case. As an equity strategist, how do you view the, the policy potency moving forward, I guess? No, um, our, our baseline view is still that the PBOC will continue to uh, remain quite accommodative okay. in terms of the financial conditions. We're still expecting more rate cuts to be delivered. We're expecting mm -hmm. another triple R cut in, to be delivered in the third quarter. Uh, now, I think uh, all the new policy fine-tuning that we have received so far, the intention is good. Right? You want to reduce speculation in the long end of the curve, and then you try to reduce uh, the short end rates. I think net net should be conducive to the economy and should be positive to the equity market. Okay. Uh, wh what's the strategy then? I mean, leading up to next week, July, the like, yeah. is it still stick to the winners like tech? I know you have a note on small caps too that just came out recently. Let me say a few things, Yvonne. Number yeah. one, at the market level, we think H. Hong Kong offshore market would yeah. do a little bit better than A, okay. given where we are on valuations and investors are more underweight. And from a market sensitivity to U.S. rate perspective, I think Hong Kong is more sensitive than A shares, right? So at the market level, we think short term, H will outperform A. Okay. Sectorally, uh, we still like TMT. Yeah. We still like consumer services. Uh, which are in a better position to uh, benefit from the um, moderate inflation that we're seeing in the service economy. And then thematically, one thing that we've been highlighting for quite some time is the theme of shareholders' return. Yeah. Right. Um, given the policy push from the regulators to encourage more companies to do buybacks, to raise dividends, at the same time, valuations are still very attractive. Uh, especially against a backdrop where domestic risk-free rates are so low, mm. right? Because you can easily get 5 6% dividend yields from buying some really high-quality assets in China.